Hi, so I hope you're all cosy and comfy. You've got your teddy bear ready and you're ready to snuggle down for another bedtime story. And our story today is called Daniel and the Scary Sleepover. Things were not looking good for God's people. They had been captured and taken away far from home. And now they were slaves of the king in Babylon. But God had not left his people. He was with them and he was looking after them. Daniel loved God and obeyed God. Now God made Daniel able to understand lots of difficult things. So it wasn't long before the king of Babylon noticed him. The king, who was called Darius, liked how clever Daniel was. So he made Daniel his most important helper of all and put him in charge of lots of other helpers. But the other helpers didn't like this. They wanted the king to like them the best. They wanted to get rid of Daniel. So they spied on Daniel. They tried to find things wrong with Daniel, things that they could tell the king, things that they could, but there weren't any. None. They couldn't find anything at all. Except there was just one thing. Every day, three times a day, without fail, no matter what, Daniel went to his room, closed the door, and prayed. The other people smiled to themselves. Let's get the king to make a new law. No one is allowed to pray to anyone except the king. Daniel won't obey this law and he will have to be punished. They were pleased with themselves for being so clever and hurried off to tell the king. The king liked their idea. He didn't know that they were tricking him, so he made it into a law. Everyone must pray only to me. If you don't, the lions will have you for their dinner. Daniel heard this new law. He knew it was wrong to pray to anyone except God. He had to do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant that he might die. So Daniel went to his room closed the door and prayed to God. That's just what the bad men knew Daniel would do. They skipped straight off to tell the king. Oh, your most glittering highness, your law says, does it not, that everyone must pray to you alone, sire? Yes, said the king. Oh, magisterial brightness, then correct us if we're wrong, but it would seem that Daniel is praying to God and not to you. The king was sad. He'd been tricked. He didn't want to hurt Daniel, but he couldn't suddenly just change the law. And so he let the soldiers throw Daniel to the lions. And as he did, he said, may your God, who you love so much, rescue you. The king went back to his palace, but he didn't sleep that night. Not a wink. He tossed and he turned until finally the first glimmer of dawn. He leapt out of bed and ran straight to the den. Daniel, he cried, has your God rescued you? Yes, Daniel shouted. God sent an angel to close the lion's mouths. And there, resting his head on Daniel's lap, was the biggest lion, purring like a little kitten. The king brought Daniel out of the den. Look, he said, Daniel doesn't even have a scratch. The king made a new law. Daniel's God is the true God, the God who rescues. 
pray to him instead. God would keep on rescuing his people like he did for Daniel. And the time was coming when God would send another brave hero like Daniel, who would love God and do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. And together, he and God would pull off the greatest rescue the world has ever known. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story and that you have a really good sleep tonight. Shall we pray as we finish our story together? Father God, thank you for the story of Daniel in the lion's den that reminds us that you look after us and you care for us. And we ask that we would choose to pray to you when we are in trouble, but also in the good times of our lives, knowing God that you are always good. In Jesus name. Amen. Sleep tight, everyone.